All right, guys, rainy day outside today, Wednesday, and uh, we are back on the TR250 project, and I decided that I'd work on the carburetor linkage problem today. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to put a return spring on here. So we're going to try to maybe make a little bracket to go back here, mount another arm on here that's going to pull this carburetor back to the return position. It operates as it should down, uh, obviously on the pedal connection, which is here at the firewall but I want something to return it all the way back so again we'll just put another crank on it with a spring back to here maybe build a little bracket off of this nut here or potentially off of one of these studs but I think we'll just go off of this uh, central one right here and we'll put an arm right here and we've got a selection of springs that we can use to return this so we'll play around with that and get the correct tension and then we'll move on to something else I do have to still fit the clevis pins for the brake and clutch pedals I've got those over here so that's another job that I need to do underneath the bulkhead which is it can be a little bit tricky but uh, got to do that plus also the return spring for the clutch pedal has to be fitted so I've got that standing by I was out here tinkering around last night it didn't take any video um, and what I did last night is I started fitting up some of the electrical uh, areas here so the relays and the fuse box are now solidly mounted and uh, we've started trying to figure out a little bit of the harness as well. So, uh, yeah, just doing little things to uh, get towards the wiring project on the weekend. Uh, I'm going to fit the brake light switch as well. That's why I'm sort of working on the uh, clevis pins for the, uh, for the pedals, because I want to get the brake light switch installed. So, but first, again, back to this uh, project here, and we'll fit that return spring, and we'll come back when we're done. Alright guys, we fitted that other arm with the spring attached to the uh, brass nut here on the middle of the uh, intake, so I think that's going to be pretty good. I also raised the uh, arms up one notch here to get a bit of a steeper curve on the push, and that was primarily to help with the clearance of my choke cable once that runs through, so uh, I think that's looking pretty good. It returns nicely now. It snaps back. It's not too, too much pressure. So I think that's going to be good. I also added a return spring down here as a safety. It's a little bit lighter spring, but uh, there is a spring down there as well. So I've got two springs helping for the return. So we should be good. Let's move on to something else. Clevis pins. Right, I've been tinkering a bit more with the uh, carb linkage and specifically the chokes and the pedal stop. So we've adjusted the pedal stop so that the pedal hits at wide open throttle, so that's number one. Number two, we have two of our three choke cables hooked up, and I initially thought this was going to be a bit of an issue the way that this linkage runs, but uh, I've run it underneath the linkage uh, from the, obviously the first carb is hooked up, the second one is hooked up, the third needs a linkage bar if we decide to go with a third carb uh, pull. But uh, this clears fine. There's enough slack in the cable as this moves down that doesn't really do any interference with it. So when I pull the, let me see if I can show you this. If I pull the choke cables out, it does actually operate as it should. So you can see the chokes being pulled there, I think, on both carbs and returning fully. So I'm happy with that. That's one more item checked off the list. So good to go there. I'm happy. All right, I'm going to attempt to do some uh, wiring here myself today prior to Elon's uh, arrival on the weekend. Uh, I've got my wiring diagram here online from Advanced Auto Wire and uh, nicely colorized. So we'll use that to do our primary wiring at least. We're going to try to get things wired up to the fuse box as they should be. I'll get Elin to check my wiring off before we actually attempt to uh, do anything as far as uh, attaching the battery. <laughs> so uh, let me get started anyway and I'll do as much as I can and uh, hopefully we'll have less to do on the weekend. Alright guys, we got a bit of a head start on the wiring at least. We've got the uh, relays and the fuse box hooked up along with some of the other ancillary items. Uh, we have the overdrive harness here hooked up, just needs to be run inside the passenger compartment under the dash and hooked up there. Uh, some of the rest of the uh, hookups will leave for when Alin comes. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of rewiring back here, maybe put some new connectors. Some of these uh, don't look so good, so we may change some of those connectors out. Put our uh, kill switch on the battery, so that's ready to go. I'm just starting to move into the passenger compartment again, and I'm thinking about installing this, uh, not installing, but getting it ready, this uh, two-piece poly gearbox cover. So this is pot, MOS part number 857135. I thought it might be a good idea to finally upgrade the old fiberboard tunnel that's in here. 
it's seen better days. It's got a few holes on the side, for example. So it's um, got a little air conditioning, extra air conditioning there. Some of you might notice I did uh, put the billet shift knob in there. I quite like the look and the feel of that. So I did like the look of the uh, matching uh, knob and uh, center of the, um, the horn push, but uh, I really like that feel of that billet knob in there, so we might go with that initially. Anyway, um, I'm going to probably pull out that center console. Um, there does need to be some wiring done for my air fuel meter and the USB port that I have in here. If you haven't seen this before, that's what that looks like. And it's a little dark in here, but those need to be wired up when Elin comes on the weekend, so we'll do that. So what I'll do is I've just got that center in there temporarily. You can just see the, the bolts are not even really uh, threaded down. We'll move that center console and we'll start removing that old tunnel. And then we'll probably work on fitting the front piece of the uh, new tunnel in once uh, Lynn here comes on the weekend and he's under the dash. All right, looks like we're going a little bit backwards again. The uh, steering wheel's off, the uh, center console's off. So we've got all that stuff standing by to go back on after all the wiring is done. So that is there. Steering wheel, new boot, and gator are there. So those will go back on later. Got the uh, transmission tunnel out, sitting over here. So this looks like it might have been an original fiberboard tunnel that somebody's fiberglassed over. Although it could be a later reproduction, I'm not sure. Anyway, here is the hole for that dipstick. Right there. We need to do the same sort of thing in this case over here on the new front piece of the transmission cover. So I'm not sh quite sure what I'm going to do as far as a grommet for that is concerned. We'll probably try to utilize something like this initially. That might give us enough clearance as far as stick out for the dipstick, but we shall see. We'll start with that, use, trying to utilize that grommet out of there, over there, once we get it marked out and drill the hole out. So that will be the next task, getting that ready for the weekend. So let's start on that. All right, guys, Saturday the 25th of September, and just coming up to 10 a.m. Final wiring day on the uh, 68 Triumph TR250 today. We've got Alin stopping by to give us a hand. So I've got his, uh, his workbench set up with his essentials over here, and that should keep him going for at least a couple hours anyway. So as you can see, uh, I did drill a hole in the front cover but unfortunately I didn't drill the hole very well. I drilled it based on the other cover's location but I should have done a better job at uh, measuring out this new cover. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, relocate that hole. I've kept the plastic plug that I pulled out of there uh, that I drilled out. I've got some of this plastic bonder. So we're going to put the plug back in and we're going to redrill a hole a little more carefully and a little more small let's say to be able to get a smaller grommet in there just around the neck of that uh, filler that's the plan anyway so that didn't work out so well back to the drawing board right, he's getting charged up so he's got the double whammy so he brought coffee and Tim's I brought coffee and Tim's so he's gonna be absolutely wired on ca caffeine and sugar and then eventually beer yeah, at some point. Well, I said beer. I said that will get you started. So uh, <laughs> now you're doubly started. So we're just about to uh, start the wiring. I grabbed my old harness out just to look at a few connections. Um, we're gonna have to bypass the regulator on the alternator because I've never had one, and nor will I be using it. So uh, we're just looking at how to do that. And thanks to Doug for sharing an email on how he did it. So we're just about ready to get to work and uh, we'll start wiring. I'm not even sure where we're going to start. Front of the car, rear of the car, right here. We're going to start right here and work our way front, back. Inside there's some stuff to do underneath the dash and I've got to figure out, if you recall, I have kind of a wonky switch uh, where I think the switches are inverted. The light switch is over here which should be the signal switch and vice versa. So I'm going to try to take a look at that and see if we can fix that. If not, I guess I'm just going to have to adapt to have the uh, lighting switch here on the uh, left-hand side. I think that's the way it's hooked up. Maybe it's just wiring underneath. I don't know. We'll have to verify that. So, big day today. Long day probably today. And we'll see how things go. All right, go. guys. Happy Sunday morning. Welcome back to the Tush Mahal. It's Tush coming at you. 
So we had a good day out in the garage yesterday. It's a bit messy and disorganized out here, but we were busy uh, yesterday pretty much for seven hours working on the wiring for this uh, car. Uh, we did manage to get uh, quite a bit of stuff accomplished, but although we have quite a bit more stuff to do, uh, we had to uh, do a little bit of deconstruction in the process. We needed to get to the back of the hazard switch. So out came the uh, tack in order to do that. So again, a little bit more deconstruction to, in order to move forward. So we did get most of the front of the car wired up. So the uh, marker lights, turn signals all work, headlights work. Uh, we got the wiring for the windscreen wiper uh, motor done. Although there's, um, as I was telling Alin, I thought I had mentioned uh, that I'd read somewhere that the wiring diagrams are not accurate on the uh, wiring of the wiper motor. So right now we've got it currently working on one speed but not self-parking. So uh, I've done a little bit more research overnight and sent Alin an article on wiring this and how it should be wired. So maybe we'll come back and revisit this. Although I said to him I rarely use my windscreen wipers anyway on the TR6. I use Rain-X pretty much. So on the rare occasion I do use the wipers <laughs> single speed and if I have to self park that's okay with me as well as long as it makes, to, makes it through uh, safety certification I'm okay if we can't get this to self park and to work on two speeds anyway um, so that's pretty much about it up the front here all the wiring is done here at the relays and at the fuse box so that's looking good alternators all wired up so yeah, again, most of the wiring in the front of the car is done, with the exception, of course, the starter is not done, and the main hookup to the solenoid is not done, but uh, we'll work on that at the next session. Um, the other thing that we did uh, before I, he left last night, again, it was a long day, it was uh, cold and rainy out here, so it was kind of that bone-chilling, you know, wet, cold uh, sort of feeling, so by the end of the day, uh, it was a little bit miserable out here in the garage, but we did manage to get uh, both the handles on the uh, car. So lynn has got a bit of a trick. Maybe I'll put a link to his video uh, where he shows himself uh, putting the handles on the Java Green TR6 that he was working on, utilizing a, you know, a piece of uh, tubing that he's cut to hold the pins and some sort of instrument like an awl or a scribe to hold the uh, pin while he's pushing it in. So I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll try to put a link to that video up in the corner, so have a look at that if you're struggling to put your handles on like I was. So I think this morning for me is just going to be a uh, garage cleanup and organization in order to uh, start fresh again. So that's really all I'm planning on doing today. I, I may do a few small things out here like maybe try to pull the wires up from the uh, reverse lights and the side marker lights up inside the trunk to make it a little bit easier and a little quicker the next wiring session we do. Uh, I may try to uh, fix the uh, front cover uh, for the transmission. I know I have to uh, put some fasteners on the bulkhead. Maybe I'll get that done. There's one there that actually needs to be cut off. Maybe I'll be able to get that done by myself. So I'm just trying to make it uh, go a little quicker the next uh, session that we uh, get into. Uh, Lynn's time is precious and I understand that. He's got a lot of projects going on and obviously he's got uh, uh, a big family life that he needs to attend to. So uh, I hate to take away his time and I want to make it uh, effective when he's here. So I'll do as much as I can in order to make that happen. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, Monday afternoon and uh, 70 degrees outside. So I figured I'd do a little painting project today. I've been working on that uh, vent flap, this thing here. And uh, you've probably seen in a little bit of previous video that I ended up sanding this down to 1,000 grit in order to try to get rid of a, a little bit of a problem I'd had before with some reactions of either the base coat or the clear coat. So I further sanded that down to 400 grit uh, this afternoon and was going to base coat it again and I've done so outside here but unfortunately I've still got a reaction even after sanding that down to 400 grit. So I don't know if you can see that there but the reaction is still popping up. So I think we're gonna have to sand it down even further and probably get back to primer at least and maybe give it a coat of primer and do a little bit of more uh, wet sanding before we get back up to a base and clear coat. So unfortunately that is not good because I'm running out of days to uh, actually do painting out here and it's getting a little bit cold. So I was hoping to be able to get this done today while the weather was okay but uh, that is not the case. So we'll strip this back down and uh, we'll build it back up in order to get base and clear on it 
before the weather turns and we can't do that anymore. All right guys, now Wednesday, take three on painting the vent lids. So hopefully things will go well today or go better today. And we'll have this finished within a few hours. So wish me luck. Here we go. All right, it looks like we managed to get the uh, vent flap painted successfully. It's looking pretty good. I think what we're gonna do now though is we're gonna move it into the house and we'll let this dry overnight. It's pretty cool out in the garage. It was about 64 degrees when I painted. It's probably down to about 55 degrees now and going to be colder overnight. So I'm going to move this in and give it a chance to dry and we'll have a better look at it tomorrow. But it's looking good for now. As long as I can get it inside without dropping it, we'll All be right, good. The vent flap is safely inside and we'll let that dry for the next couple of days and maybe we'll try to get that on the car this weekend. Unfortunately, I haven't done too much on the actual car itself other than really really small jobs. I've um, Been doing little things. I'm going to call this light duty. I've put myself on light duty because I've uh, injured my shoulder a couple weeks ago and I haven't been really looking after it that well and I've been doing things like lifting heavy stuff and you know trying to work on the car underneath the dash while supporting myself on my bad shoulder etc and that's getting me nowhere it's actually uh, causing me to lose sleep at night so I've decided to take it a little bit easy and like I said assign myself some lighter duty jobs so here's one of the jobs I've been working on I've decided to uh, organize my little plastic bins of uh, old fasteners so nuts and washers and bolts etc and just random stuff that I've collected you'd be surprised how many times this little bin of random pieces has come in handy um, I've also got my uh, new hardware all sorted out, mostly stainless steel stuff there, or grade 8 stuff. So we've got that all done, so that's what I've been keeping myself busy doing the last couple of days out here. There are some small jobs I can do on the uh, car, like run some wiring through grommets, etc. But I am trying to be a little bit better looking after myself, so... Uh, Unfortunately, the car will have to wait for a little bit. It'll get done when it gets done, like I said, but when it's not fun to work on it and you're hurting yourself in the process, it's probably time to uh, give it a bit of a break and uh, just move on to something else. So that's what we've done. So that's it for now. We'll uh, continue to uh, do a little bit more sorting out here. We'll wrap this up and uh, we'll move on to something else. Like I'd mentioned, maybe we'll run some wiring up through grommets in the rear of the, uh, into the rear of the uh, trunk or the boot so we can uh, move on with the wiring the next time uh, Eileen uh, comes up to visit. All right, Friday, October the 1st, 2021, and it sure is getting cold here. It feels like fall. It is fall, so the temperatures are struggling to uh, get to the 65 degree Fahrenheit, you know, 15, 16 degrees Celsius mark. Right now it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit out in the garage, which is not really conducive to uh, painting. And I'm losing, quickly losing my opportunity or my window to uh, get this hardtop section painted. So uh, tomorrow, Saturday, is supposed to be about 75 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with a small chance of rain. And then Sunday, I think it's a little bit uh, warmer, but I think with a higher chance of rain. So we're going to try to get this panel sanded today and into primer so we can get it painted tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're just going to strip this down. I was trying to, um, I'm going to re obviously remove the seals off this first and then start sanding it down. And I was trying to decide whether I wanted the inside of this top gray or just leave it white. I was thinking of doing gray just up to the edge here all the way around and leave the inside white. I thought it might leave the interior a little bit brighter inside. But uh, we'll see. I haven't decided on that yet. But uh, first thing I need to do is strip all the uh, seals as mentioned and some of this little bit of hardware here. And then we'll start scuff sanding this down to 220 grit to get it ready for primer. I haven't decided whether I'm going to be doing any body work on this yet. I'm trying to resist the urge to do it. It is a fiberglass top, so it is a little bit wavy. But uh, I'm not sure whether I want to fix that or not. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, let me get to stripping this stuff first and I'll make some decisions along the All way. Alright guys, the underside is now sanded down to 240 grit, ready for a coat of primer. The top side I've decided to uh, guide coat and sand and see where our low spots are. And uh, then we'll determine how bad this is. I know there's a bad area over here that could use some filler. We'll just see how bad it is before I decide whether I want to add filler to this top or not. If it's minor, we'll just probably leave it, and if it's major, we'll probably fix it. 
but let's see what happens after I uh, scrub this down with some 240 grit on some long blocks. All right, the top of the hard top is sanded, and as uh, suspected, I have a few little waves here. You can see where it's left the guide coat. So I guess what we'll do is we'll break out a bit of filler and we'll do these areas while we can. The rest of the top is not too bad. So let's fix up those spots and then we can move on to getting this into primer. Probably epoxy primer first before we hit it with some uh, high build primer. All right, short strand fiberglass is applied. We'll uh, let this dry. We'll sand her down to uh, 220 grit and we'll get ready to apply the primer. All right, I've decided to go with uh, polyester primer. So that is the first coat of the uh, Evercoat polyester primer, the Featherfield G2. I'm going to put another second coat on and we'll flip it over once it's dry and do the top side. All right, top side is now polyester primered and we'll just let this dry for a few hours. It's about six o'clock, so we'll have to let it sit out here till about eight and then try to carefully move it into the garage. Just got it sitting up off the uh, sawhorses with the uh, hard top fixings, keeping it elevated so it doesn't stick to the uh, bottom side. Hopefully it won't anyway. I think that's working so far. Anyway, we'll see what it looks like in a couple hours. All right, end of the night on Friday, and we've just brought the top inside the garage to continue its drying cycle overnight. We'll get back out here tomorrow morning with the uh, 600 grit sandpaper and we'll scratch this down before we get it into that uh, graphite colored base coat that are colored matched to the uh, wheel centers and then we'll hit that with uh, probably three coats of base probably do three or four coats of clear coat and uh, probably going to end up having to do that outside I don't want to be spraying anything inside the garage so we'll see how things work out outside the uh, I don't think I showed you the actual vent cover I might have but anyway, it turned out okay, but that's a significantly smaller piece than this hardtop section. So we'll see how we do outside tomorrow. Hopefully the uh, bugs will stay away and I won't have any leaves falling off the trees. It'll be a nice calm day outside tomorrow, but we'll see when we get there. See you tomorrow. All right, good morning. Saturday, uh, 8.20 a.m. And we've got the hardtop out on the stand here in the driveway. And we've got our 600 grit standing by. We are just about to start uh, sanding on this panel to get it ready for paint. Uh, I've decided that I am going to paint this inside. I was threatening to do it outside yesterday. But logistically, I think it makes it more sense to do it inside the garage, which means the car is going to have to come down off of stands and be pushed out into the driveway. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of juggling to do before we get to that point. Well, the first thing we've got to do regardless is get this sanded. So. Once we get it sanded, we'll work on relocating uh, cars and parts out into either the trailer or the driveway to keep them uh, safe from any overspray. And then we will uh, break out the base coat, clear coat, and get this uh, last, very last part of the car painted. Looking forward to it. All right, guys, just coming up to quarter to 11. We've got the car outside of the driveway. We're going to keep the front door shut. We're going to only exhaust out the side. I don't want to have any chance of getting any overspray, even though the car is covered. I don't want to get any chance of any overspray heading out the garage doors and onto the car. So, here's the top. It's a little bit, a uh, little sketchy, but I think it's going to work. I wanted to be able to paint both sides of the panel at the same time. So, we've got it hung up here, and I think that's going to work. So we've got our base coat ready to be mixed over here. We've done a quick garage clean out. We'll probably wet the floor down and then we'll go ahead. We'll spray our base coat. It's only 65 ish, 67 ish out here. So it's a little bit chilly. We're going to use a, a fast reducer in the paint to help out a little bit. So I think we're ready to go. Guns ready, paints ready. We'll mix her up, shoot the base coat, let that dry pretty well and then we'll hit it with the uh, three coats of clear. Alright guys, three coats of the uh, gray or graphite base coat are on. I think it sprayed out pretty well. So we'll let this set up and then we'll get ready to hit it with the clear coat. Hard to say if the color is going to match or not until I hold it up to a wheel. But we're going with it regardless. So yeah, stay tuned for the clear coat. All right, looks uh, good from afar, but definitely far from good. Not a good day out in the garage today. 
as far as uh, spraying clear coat was concerned, major, major issues. Got a major curtain run basically across the center of the hard top. And I don't know if it was just obviously me trying to hammer on the clear coat. Still pretty cool out in the garage, just about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Was using a new uh, clear coat that I'm not familiar with. But I'm going to blame it on me, just user error. I just, like I said, I tried to hammer the clear on. I wasn't really happy with the first two clear, uh, coats of clear. I thought it was going on a little bit dry. And I tried to uh, do a heavier coat on the uh, third pass. And I uh, got a little overzealous, obviously, and have this curtain now. I don't even really want to show it to you, but it happens. So I've got a major sag. Like I'm talking major, major, all the way across in the middle of the bonnet or the middle of the hard top so I guess what we'll have to do is let this dry for a few days I don't think there's any uh, chance of saving that unfortunately so I think the best bet for me as opposed to trying to get that sag out it's not even a sag it's a it's a curtain <laughs> and it's all the way across and it's got lots of little fingers that are very difficult to get rid of so the best course of action for me is going to be to sand this entire top side down again down to 600 grit rebase coat it and re-clear coat it hopefully we're going to have the weather to be able to do that like i said i'm going to have to wait for this to cure up for a couple days to allow that clear coat to harden enough for me to be able to sand it good news is you know, well not really any good news but the inside <laughs> sprayed fine but that's not the part that you're actually going to see so <laughs> that doesn't really matter as much as the outside so yeah big step back unfortunately on this project and uh, the car seems to be fighting me a bit here towards the end I don't know whether it's just if I'm just getting impatient uh, I'm trying to get this done quickly before the uh, weather turns badly but uh, this is going to set me back another few days obviously waiting for this to uh, to dry and harden up and then another couple of days for me to get this sanded base coated and clear coated again so a bit of a bummer but um, I always share the ups and downs on this channel so this is definitely a downer and uh, nothing I can do about it except fix it all right, that's it for now, guys. We'll talk to you later. All right, guys, Sunday morning, just after 8 o'clock, and uh, back out in the garage checking out the uh, carnage from yesterday. I'll cut that down shortly and move it over to a rack where I'll just let it continue to dry for another couple of days before I sand that back down and try attempt number two. Anyway, today is uh, going to be a good day. Uh, I've got a Lynn coming this morning, and we're going to do part... I think it's part three now of wiring on the TR250. We did do about seven hours of wiring last weekend and we'll probably do at least another seven to ten hours again today and that should get us closer to where we need to be to finally get this car running under its own power and moving under its own power. So that would be a good uh, milestone to achieve at some point. So anyway, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll cut this down as mentioned I'll reposition the car a little bit, maybe put it up on jack stands. Uh, I do need to get under the car uh, probably to do the uh, oxygen sensor location and wiring. So uh, I'm going to have to put it up on stands at some point anyway. So I may as well go ahead and do that now. All right, 10.30 and the, the wiring guru has shown up. Had our breakfast, our Timmy's, so we're just about ready to go. We're just trying to figure out where we want to start first. We gonna start at the rear of the car today and work our way forwards, or what are we gonna do? Whatever you say, boss. Yeah, I guess maybe we'll work at the rear first and get all those wires tucked up inside the boot and connected, and then we'll uh, work our way forwards into the passenger compartment. Still need to do the uh, brake light switch in here, um, put the gauges back. Uh, we got to do some wiring for the oxygen sensor and for the USB port, and probably a few more other little things. Overdrive we hooked up uh, yeah. last time we were done. But we need to maybe put the half of the transmission tunnel in and start running the wiring out the top. We'll see if we get to that or not. And then we're going to maybe play around with the wiper motor wiring a bit more up here. Got to work on the starter wiring or the hookup to the solenoid. 
anyway, we'll we'll get there eventually. We're going to start at the b the back and work our way to the front. Let's get crack a lock. Let's get crack a lockin'. All right, making good progress today. So we've got side marker lights. We've got reverse lights. We've got brake lights, signal lights, running lights, all working in the rear. License plate lamps. I don't know if I mentioned that. And at the front, we've got all the lights working: headlights, side marker lights, flashers, running lights working at the front. So we're making good progress. Um, overdrive is hooked up, so we got that uh, relay clicking and the solenoid holding. So uh, we've got the reverse lights hooked up, although we're going to have to run that through the tunnel, so they're just hooked up loosely. So we'll probably work on the brake light switch. We just have a jury rigged at the moment. So we'll probably work on the brake light switch and then continue on from there. All right, coming up to 3 p.m. And we pretty much have all the, I guess the stock wiring done. Um, the car does crank. Um, all the lights work. Um, car does turn over on the switch. As far as I know, like the heater fan, the blower fan, all that stuff will work. Wiper, washer motor works. Wipers work now. Now we're working on wiring up the AFR um, gauge and a USB port. So uh, non-stock kind of stuff, yeah. I guess. But for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape. We're doing, I think, better than the last time where we had to do a lot of troubleshooting and go back and forth. It took us a long time. It didn't take me a long time, it took Ellen a long time to do a lot of troubleshooting on the last session. So this is actually the third session because we did a lot of stuff originally with the uh, relays yeah. and the fuses on the first session. So we probably have about seven hours probably from the first session, seven hours from the last session, and we're probably going to have another five, seven hours on this session. Mm -hmm. So not exactly, uh, not time consuming. So anyway, we're getting there. So I'm happy to report. All right, we'll come back with one so more update. So you've probably never heard Alin swear on any of his videos. So if you've ever had the joy of putting one of these transmission tunnel covers in, you probably learned some new Bulgarian. Anyway, we've got the half cover, but it's still a challenge to get those uh, bulkhead bolts in. So uh, that one in. he's just been fighting with these ones on the uh, driver's side. So finally got that one in. So we've got the other three across the top end, so we're just going to start working on the floor ones. I know there's uh, directions on this is a Clark & Clark two-piece uh, cover. I know there's directions on their site, which tells you to start the bolts on the floor first and then work on the uh, bulkhead ones. No, don't listen. <laughs> but uh, we've, we've tried that and uh, we're actually started the ones on the bulkhead first and then going back and doing the floor ones. Hopefully that works out. So, uh, yeah, it's a struggle, and like I said, if you want to learn some new Bulgarian words, it's a, it's a good opportunity. <laughs> anyway, we're, ma we're making progress. Bulgaria is the only country where everything has a mother. Oh, yeah? Because the worst swearing words are <laughs> involved their mothers. Okay, well, I haven't heard them say that yet. Anyway. <laughs> All right, just coming up to uh, 6.30, and we've had a, a good day out in the garage today after a bad day out in the garage yesterday. So it happens, but anyway, uh, we've got pretty much everything done that we wanted to get done today. So I would call the car pretty much 90% uh, hooked up. Of course, I need to do, put things in like the center console and hook those connections back up, but the wiring is done for it. I need to put the, uh, the gauge back in, but again, the wiring is done behind the dash. So transmission tunnel is in, locked down. We've got the overdrive and the reverse lights run through the cover. We've got the dipstick grommeted in the right location. Alin did a great job of measuring that out and cutting that hole. So everything is good. Everything is operating as it should. So uh, happy, happy. Good day out in the garage like I mentioned. So I think we'll call it an end to this video and I'll probably upload something. Uh, I think I have a few probably maybe two weeks worth of random footage that I can sort of uh, post anyway so you know that I'm still alive and uh, making progress on the project however it's been slow anyway that's it for tonight guys again big thank you to Alin for uh, helping with the uh, wiring and other random bits um, so couldn't have done it without him literally couldn't have done it without him so you can have a well-deserved beer and then be on his way all right that's it for now guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and thanks for commenting have a good night, good night.